Hey everyone, and welcome to another Factorio Friday Facts, number 438, Space Age Wrap-Up. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me today. And uh, I did want to just quickly uh, say a few things before we get started here. I know that I have not been uh, really putting out very many videos for the last uh, couple weeks, and I haven't streamed for almost a month now. And uh, I just kind of want to let you guys know uh, what, what's going on a little bit. So I'm not at all like bored of the game. I haven't abandoned the game or, or my content or anything intentionally. Uh, but about two weeks ago, we, uh, we experienced a really, uh, really hard and difficult loss in our family. And uh, to be honest, I've, I've just been having, uh, having a hard time uh, kind of de dealing with that and, and uh, processing it and, uh, yeah, I, I've tried to fit in content where I can, where I, where I have like the motivation and, and the uh, like mental uh, like fortitude to do it. Um, so I have been doing it and I do plan to pick things up. You know, things will get better over time as they do. Uh, but I just want to let you know, you know, I'm, I'm not seeking any, any sympathy or anything like that. I just want to let you know, like it has nothing to do with my interest in Factorio uh, overall. I mean, right now I don't have a lot of interest. I don't have much motivation um, to do a lot of things, but I know that will get better and I do miss playing the game extensively. So I will get back to things and uh, I'm, I'm not really going to go more into it, but I, I just want to let you guys know that uh, I, I will be ramping up content in the future. And uh, I mean, hopefully sooner rather than later, because I definitely have a bunch of ideas. It's just a matter of actually having like the brain power to do them. But anyway, let's hop into the Friday facts here and go in. So it's kind of a multi-pronged uh, like subject or uh, multi-pronged subjects here where we start with a soundtrack by Albert and Donnie Uh Basically, they have released a full and extensive soundtrack on Steam, or, or really they did this like last week or the week before, I think, but they have kind of expanded it even further. 50 tracks in total. Finally, you will find your favorite track in the album for sure. The interludes are not included. These are composed just for the game to properly jump from a track to another without breaking anything not convenient for the album. And they said when they started the project, we had to deal with uh, Petter of covering one hour music per planet. Five hours in total seemed at the time like a lot of music. Now the soundtrack is completed, we can proudly say that each planet length is finally an hour 15 for space, 133 for Volcanus, 155 for Glaba, 142 for uh, Fulgura, and 2 hours for Aquello. Interesting, Aquello has uh, substantially more music, well, maybe not substantially, a decent amount more music than some of these. Um, and in total, we have 8 hours and 27 minutes of ultra-fine factual music, uh, perfectly mastered to enjoy in the game and outside. Also... And then have in mind that 10 of the tracks are mixed procedurally in the engine, making the composition variable each time that plays in the game. For the album, we have rendered an average version of each uh, variable track in order to complete the album experience. The time length in the game can easily surpass by far the total time of the album, especially if we count the interludes also uh, mixed directly into the game. But uh, overall... We have some good stuff um, here. Definitely, you know, if you want to support the devs even more, uh, and or if you want the music, you can buy on Steam. I think it's like seven bucks or something. Uh, but but the music in the expansion is is honestly really really good. So I may have to pick that up as well. Uh, now let's move on to probably what a lot of you are interested, in, and this is the space age wrap up. So I'm gonna summarize some of this, but basically, uh, they go into bugs and then their plans for the future. So uh, they said something about 150 bugs in the forums and Friday Facts 360 in some media taking it as Factorio 1.0 is still a bit on the buggy side. Uh, while obviously when we allowed the releases because almost all the bugs were tiny corner case and inconsistencies or something that almost never happens, which we take a look at anyway, but doesn't make the game really bad. The experience doesn't stop us from being transparent. At this point, they have 800 plus bug reports on the forums, but again, not many are serious bugs. There are a lot of duplicates and many are even features, which is pretty funny. I kind of uh, expected this to happen, you know, with a big release and, and new stuff. Uh, you know, some things that are intended can be mistaken for bugs, for sure. Uh, we, when looking at our Resolve Bugs forum, we have fixed more than 625 bug reports since release, which is insane, by the way. You know, this game, Factoria, has only been out, actually, I believe yesterday will have been a month on the 21st. Uh, so, this, the game has been out a month, and they have fixed, well, Space Age, obviously, game has been out a month, and they fixed 625 bugs. I mean, that's like four, uh, that's 
that's a lot. That's that's like 150 or 170 or something bugs a week. Like I I, I can't do that exact math in my head, but it's it's a lot. Uh, and since we prioritize the more critical ones, the game should be pretty okay for the vast majority of people. So, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't really, like I said, I mean, I haven't been playing a ton the last couple weeks here, but even when I was playing a lot, like, before release, when it was even more buggy, um, and even for, like, a week or two after release, I didn't encounter really any game-breaking bugs. There were some things here and there, and they've obviously fixed a ton of them, so... I'm not concerned about this, and I, I don't really think you guys should be either. I'm not saying you are, but if you are, I don't think this should be a concern uh, because, well, excuse me, uh, because, uh, you know, like I said, they're, they're fixing them super quick, and also a lot of it is probably not even that important or are not even bugs to begin with. And basically, they will continue fixing bugs, which they estimate to take about two months to get all of them done. But, you know, the, the thing with Factorio is that they do fix like basically all the bugs like this is you know even in 1.1 they were still releasing bug fixes for it like a month or two up until 2.0 release so uh, they they will continue working on this i have full faith in that uh, once this phase is done we want to start preparing the last major release for the foreseeable future at least for factorio 2.1 we don't know exactly what it will be but some of the more risky changes related to mod interface, quality of life, graphical tweaks. It basically changes too big for putting into 2.0, but don't expect anything too huge like a content, big content additions. It will mainly just be finishing touches and cool widgets and stuff, allowing more contraptions. So I'm really interested what this is going to contain, my hope. And, uh, you know, may maybe this will be the last time I ever mention this. That, <laughs> that, that would be nice. My hope is maybe like reworked uh, assembler and, uh, refinery graphics that would be fantastic uh because to me they really really do stand out against all these other amazing 2.0 graphics uh there's also a few other things they mentioned at the land party that like they acknowledged they were going to do or really wanted to do at least and didn't have time to put it in 2.0 and they had mentioned they were going to get it in 2.1 even if they don't like i'm not upset necessarily or anything because i know stuff changes they have a lot on their plate uh but i'm hoping for some of those things i don't want to mention them just in case they do come. I don't want to be like accidentally leaking stuff. Uh, it was like they said, it's nothing like it's not like they're adding a new planet or something like that. Uh, but there were some still some pretty nice little cool, cool things there that I think uh, would be nice to have in the game. So continuing forward, Friday Facts schedule after more than a year of continual weekly Friday Facts. We feel that it's a good time to stop now. Fixing bugs doesn't really admit that interesting topics and we prefer to focus on the work now. I can imagine publishing some Friday Facts once 2.0 development is underway if we have some interesting things to show or whenever we have something important to say. So yeah, we can expect this to be probably the last Friday Facts for several months. And I'm kind of sad just because I enjoy doing these and you know, it, it, man, when, when, cause they stopped for a long time, right? And when they started this back up for 2.0, I was so excited and I love doing it every week for over a year, like they said. And you know, we're not gonna have that again. Uh, ever really i mean at least for a very very long time we'll get into that uh, a little bit further down here but uh i understand obviously if they're just fixing bugs <laughs> like most of us probably don't want to read weekly updates on all of the bugs they're fixing i'm not saying it's like bad stuff but if you're not really a technical person it may not be super interesting uh but moving in uh statistics so Factorio players collectively played over 88,000 years on Steam only, by the way, which is more than double since last time we checked in Friday Facts 365. I won't bother with all of the statistics this time, but we moved from 0.34 lines of code per one buyer to 0.24 lines of code per one buyer, so we're getting more efficient, I guess, <laughs> which is which is so great. This is like such a Factorio automation uh, efficiency way of measuring their success, either with code or selling or both, I would say it is. They're probably... Their coding is probably a bit more efficient, but also they sold like so many copies of both the base game and the expansion. Uh, this is improved uh, quite a lot here. That's uh, quite a significant improvement. You know, it's like like a like a thirty percent increase almost, or, or decrease, but increase in performance, I suppose, and efficiency. Uh, and then tests. I want to restate that without our almost six thousand automated tests, we would never be avoiding injury introducing old bugs by fixing new bugs and we hope that it gets more recognized and gaming companies will recognize this approach as the gold standard here's our updated video showing all the current tests we have in a 4x4 parallel grid enjoy and 
I don't know if I've actually seen this before, so I'm going to go ahead, like, like I, I haven't actually seen them show this before, I don't think, so I'm going to go ahead and play this. Uh, hopefully we don't get ads. If we do, I'm just going to have to uh, skip here or, or do a cut or something, uh, but what, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so it would appear there, I guess there is kind of sound, there we go. Dude, this is so crazy. So it's literally just like automatically playing the game and building a bunch of stuff to test things. I've seen this on a small scale. They've shown this in the past, like with like one or two of these happening, but this is just crazy to see everything that they have automated to test. We see rails, rocket launching, spider-trons, like, trying to traverse over here, belts. And then I'm sure they have, like, a logging system where if it, like, crashes or something, they automatically log it. This is so crazy. This is, like... I can't imagine the time it took to write the scripts or whatever that does this. I have, they, I do remember they went into this at one point on like creating these tests. It was quite a long time ago. I think a couple years ago now, but I imagine the time it took to write these was fairly to write the scripts and set this up was fairly significant. But I also bet that the like time saved and headache saved with the amount of bugs it finds before release is absolutely worth more than the time it took to, to actually make these like this is pretty phenomenal the amount of tests they can perform with this this is wild and i really do want to just touch on that you know they say somewhere that uh they hope it is will be more recognized with the approach um and stuff so basically you know this is an issue with a lot of uh a lot of game companies i think where like, they don't really do significant enough testing beforehand. You know, so many games nowadays, or, or, I mean, even in the past, but it seems like even more now, release filled with bugs. And these are, like, AAA games. These are games, billion-dollar game companies, and $70 games you pay, and they come out with all these bugs in them. Not all of them. Not, not all the games are like this. But, you know, like, you compare that to Factorio, which releases... And has very few game breaking bugs if any some releases have had like basically no game breaking bugs on release and i really do hope my hope is that other game companies uh follow this but unfortunately it's probably unlikely because they're more, more focused on uh just making quick money than they are in actually making a good game uh but factorio is definitely a gold standard for, for game companies to follow because this is just absolutely phenomenal now what is after? So this is pretty interesting. One of the most frequent questions I'm getting, well, I'm not really sure, but we are uh, playing with different kinds of ideas for the next game. We, will we figure something out worth doing? Maybe. To clear my head and gather a little bit of inspiration, I decided to experience the fresh world of Warcraft world for a while. And find, you can find me in the fresh server in the guild called Factorio Must Grow. So this is Coverex. Coverex plays a lot of WoW. Uh, or did in the past, and the game I'm thinking about is related to WoW in a similar way as to how Factorio is related to Minecraft. And this is pretty interesting. I actually, we did have a discussion with Kovrex, uh, like in person at the LAN party about this, about like what is after 2.0, what are your plans? And he did bring something up. He didn't actually mention WoW specifically, but he did say that he would like to try to create like a very unique type of uh, RPG and right that that's what I mean wow is an MMO but basically like the same type of general thing I don't think he would want to make it an MMO necessarily but just like you know uh, an RPG or in, in stuff and I'm pretty interested by this I mean like wow was never really my cup of tea I played like Guild Wars uh, but in general RPGs are not usually something I have found incredibly interesting uh, and, you know, again, this type of thing, like if they did this, this is years away. But what I will say is that basically whatever Factorio, the Factorio team makes, I will try. Like I, 
even if it's an RPG, even if it's, uh, you know, I mean, they wouldn't, I don't think they would make like a, like an FPS, but, uh, e even so, like, like, even if RPGs aren't my thing and even if RPGs aren't your thing, I have no doubt the Factorio team would make something amazing. Now, would they make something as groundbreaking as Factorio? Maybe, maybe not, uh, just because, you know, I think the whole, like, genre of RPGs has been a lot more, uh, developed and played out than the genre that Factorio is when they first started, but I really do think they could make something incredible just because of how dedicated their team is and, like, how how the way they think about things, you know, like, I, I really did get an insight, even more of an insight into this, meeting them in person and being with them for a week, like, these guys are incredible. They're really talented and smart and, and just the way they approach problems and approach the way of thinking about things is I think different than most other gaming companies approach a process of creating a game and I think that could yield something pretty amazing uh, but I'm not going to ramble anymore here we have definitely um, gone on uh, for a little maybe too long for the length of this Friday Facts but this could be the last one for several months here and uh, I hope you all are enjoying Space Age I definitely am really excited to be able to be back playing it like really consistently and uh, extensively as well hopefully coming in the near future and uh, you know I am going to be trying to put out more videos I do have one actually on circuits planned a uh, circuit network stuff planned hopefully over the weekend and uh, keep an eye out for that and then uh, yeah again I, I do apologize guys I haven't I it, it's a really unfortunate time for something uh, like this to happen uh, because I had all these plans for Factorio just like massive content explosion, like making so many videos and all this. And, you know, fortunately life happens. You can't control these things and uh, it, it'll be okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get back in, into the grind and in, in, in the rhythm of things here, but that is going to do it. Um, thank you all so much for watching and thank you all so much for your, your support uh, just always. And even when I haven't necessarily been the most active for various reasons uh, in life, I, I do greatly appreciate it. And, I, I just, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I really appreciate it, and I hope you all enjoyed and are enjoying the game, and I look forward to hearing what you all had to say down in the comments, uh, you know, what, if there is anything, and uh, if you did enjoy a like is appreciated, of course. If you are new and not subscribed already, feel free to, to keep up with future Space Age content, and uh, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.